So here I am in New Zealand, a green and pleasant land located about 37 degrees south of the equator. Uganda is about 14,000 kilometers that way. So let's go. And so, as the Google Earth graphic wings us towards Africa, I should tell you that this Uganda section was part of a larger trip that my partner and I took. And here we are. Uganda is on the equator. But of course we didn't start our Uganda trip at the equator. We started in Entebbe, where the airport is, uh, where we stayed in a very nice guest house on the shores of Lake Victoria, with the plan of hiring a vehicle to self-drive around Uganda. But before that, I knew I would need the correct attire. Here we are. Here we are. I've bought this shirt, and it involved Involve me selling my old shirt. Yes, let me let me bring it. Okay, I sold my shirt. I, I can only have so many shirts, but I like this shirt. So this shirt. So there, there is my shirt, which has been in many videos, and now I have got a new shirt, and it's got. Wait a minute. Big five. The big five. So what is your name? I'm called Anita. Anita. Thank you, Anita. And you? Your name? My name is Paul. Oh, nice meeting you, Paul. Right. Happy to see you at my shop yes. in Entebbe, Kajambo Crafts. It deals in all African wear and all African crafts. Recommended. Recommended. Thank you. So our vehicle got delivered to our guest house, but there was a problem with it. The Nissan Prado that we ordered, uh, there was a problem, and we got a free upgrade to the Nissan blah blah blah. What is it? GX V8. It's a V8 engine, it's a bit of a beast. Um, this thing looks like it's been around Africa about 50 times. Um, not exactly new, but uh, yeah, it seems to be all right. The traffic, we've been going for about two hours now. Um, the traffic initially was hectic, the driving was a challenge. We seem to have got into a far more normal bit of road now. The, there's less vehicles coming from all directions. But we're enjoying it so far. It's, uh, it's an interesting part of the world and uh, interesting to drive through. This is the Zewa Rhino Sanctuary. So we're fucking rhinos. This is DJ Khaled. Hi. The real, the original and best. Yeah. There he is. Yeah. <laughs> So that's Madame on the left, her baby, and then adopted son on the right. Uh, the restaurant is just over there where we had dinner last night. Um, our room is here. Uh, and we came back from, from dinner last night and couldn't get into our room because there were three rhino grazing on the grass <laughs> right outside the room there. So we had to hide behind this little wall, this tiny little wall. Um, <clears throat> which afforded us some protection, I suppose, and we had to wait for the, the rhino to go away, so quite a serious pest control issue here. This is Murchison Falls National Park, and this is the falls after which the park is named. One of Uganda's most famous natural phenomena, one of its most famous things, and rightly so, it's extraordinarily impressive. I say I need you and I can't let you go. Me need you and I can't let you go.
juko Oli bizela bia nina evyo mbulako Owo mkwano kwa gala kande juko Owo ni mubanda zerero ndi mkwano nechibanda Kale wasuso kuganja Oli muomu oli nga ganja Joli kalamiti tole ita kalamiti Kana kawita kembaga kakiko nyomide Muli fe don't run and muli fe don't rush Kana kamuli kumu kwa nuka mpani Sami baby don't rush I'm all over you All over your body body all over you So don't rush All over you All over your body body all over you Sami baby don't rush I'm all over you All over your body body all over you Oh Sami baby don't rush All over you Way in the distance there you can see uh, Lake Albert. So we're heading that way along this very windy, dusty road. And we're gonna try and find um, a little fishing village, uh, hopefully to where we can stay. Just uh, drove along the edge of this escarpment here. Uh, it's a really nice waterfall with a pumping station at the bottom there. Should we get you? Do you want to be in our video? Hello. <laughs> uh, yeah. And also the people are very, uh, very friendly and cool. Yeah. Hello. All right. Do you want to be in it? You can be in it. Come, come, come. Woohoo! Come. <laughs> all right. It's awesome. Get the cows. No! Oh, <laughs> Check that out. I'm going to work. 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 I'm going Look at these. Look at, look at these magnificent beasts. There's loads of them as well, sheltering in them. They look so fierce. We, we're staying here tonight uh, next to this rather cliched African village in an Ernest Hemingway style tent uh, at the edge of a massive lake, Lake Albert. A more African experience I couldn't begin to imagine. It's, it's, um, it's quite surreal. It's cool. It's really cool. We've been invited to look at this man's Goats. He seems pretty proud of his goats. Let's take a look. He's got some young goats apparently and this very impressive structure. Look at that. Let's take a bit of building. With safety fluoro jacket on. Good to see. Well, let's have a look. Oh, can we go in? Yes, you can enter in. There's no problem. Oh, we're going in to the goat enclosure. Whoa! I love it. Oh, look at the bag. What a cool building. And here are the prize winning goats. Don't attack me. I've just been snuck up on. I was just, I was trying to take a video that direction. And I realised I've been ambushed from behind. By a load of laundry and kids. What's going on here? Look at these. Oh, here comes another one. Whoa. There he goes. Small but perfectly formed. <laughs> too cute. Just...
tired, Paul. <laughs> Hello. Jumbo. I have a feeling they are bringing this wood just for us. This is an awesome spot given that not many people would know about it. Love it. We are driving to Fort Portal today. I've uh, been going for about two hours. Uh, I don't know, we're about halfway there, I think. So uh, quite a big day of driving today, maybe our biggest day. Um, we're not we're not racing around. Um, been been a good trip so far. Been a great trip actually. The roads are surprisingly good. They're empty, uh, easy easy to drive really. Um, you have to keep your wits about you uh, a bit because of all the you know, the livestock and the motorbikes. But they're, they're pretty empty, um, and because they're building a bloody great big pipeline, very controversially, across the country, because they're going to be drilling for oil in a national park, the roads have, uh, have improved vastly in the last sort of 10 years, apparently, according to the locals. Um, so what was a dirt road? Is now a sealed road and a really well no, it's new yeah so the driving great um, and it's not boring it's interesting um, it's, yeah it's not boring drive there's always something to look at out in the country uh, through the towns on the big roads on the back roads it's yeah it's there's always stuff to look at. You go through the towns and they've got these bloody judder bars, which are bloody over the top, if you ask me. But anyway, um, they do like a speed bump in the nation of Uganda. Uh, um, like this one. I'm going to go fast over it. Hey. There you go. For a bit of fun. Um, it slows you down, I suppose. It's poor. This is a poor country. Confronting at times. A constant reminder of, of how lucky we are. I mean, we're so much more wealthy than than the people here. So I'm not I'm not sure I've been anywhere like it. Having said that. The people are lovely, friendly, they're fun, you know, they wave as you're driving down the road. Here in Fort Portal, we are very close to the equator and um, the weather's changed. Uh, it's extraordinary that yesterday we were driving through conditions that seemed like a desert, cacti really burnt and dry um, interesting um, I'm gonna use that phrase quite often I think <laughs> um, because the place we're staying is interesting um, I had dinner here last night and discovered that in this youth hostel um, by far the youngest person staying here is V um, and the second youngest is me um, everybody at dinner had a connection with Uganda's pre-colonial, uh, sorry, pre-independence past um, when it was a British colony. This place is owned uh, by Dutch people and we've just had breakfast here and rather extraordinarily, look at this, check that out. 
a great big lump of Dutch cheese. We haven't eaten anything like this since we left New Zealand. So, yes, interesting. We have just stopped on the side of the road to try to turn the heater on, put on sweatshirts and jackets. Jumpers. And jumpers. Paul's got his little cap on. Put me hat on. And we're cold. And we have turned the aircon off and it's still cold. So it's very strange. But anyway, this is what life has thrown at us, so we are going to make the best of it. Oh, look at all that tea. Oh yeah, the tea. I'll show you. So we're going to head off for our chimpanzee trekking experience today, which we're looking forward to. There is a very minor issue with it, in that one of us is locked in the toilet. How are you doing, babe? Pardon? How are you? I'm okay. Can you see my camera? Yeah. Hello. Uh, it's a pretty lonely place in here. Right. Locked in the toilet. Right. Um, let's hope I get out one day. So there we are. Updates to follow. I made it out of the toilet alive. Trying to organise chimpanzee tickets from behind a toilet wall with four men banging away at it. But we've made it. We've now got 50 minutes to get to see chimpanzees. Let's go. We made it, so we are now entering the Kabali forest, hopefully in the search of some chimpanzees. We've got three rangers here with us. We have Grace, we have David, Daddy. and we have Florence, and we have Paul. This is the Kabali forest, which contains this troop of habituated chimpanzees. This one's eating a wild jackfruit. banana, two bananas, three bananas, four, four bananas make a bunch and so do many more. They're not short of a banana, there's bananas there, we left Fort Portal behind and we're, we're travelling further south, deep into banana country. Let's go. We are on the Gazinga Channel um, with our guide here. Mandy and our driver DK and here is Paul doing his normal thing. Elephants are led by a dominant female and it is always the oldest. So you can differentiate whether it is a lefty or a righty. Thank you. 
Since getting my Big Five t-shirt, I have seen the Big Four. Uh, these ones, rhinos, um, buffalo, lion, elephant, yet to see the leopard. And it is for that reason that I refuse to wear this shirt the normal way around. I've been wearing it. inside out tomorrow i think it might be my last chance we're in queen elizabeth national park here now and <clears throat> got my fingers crossed on the leopards we got to this place we got recommended it we got told it's quite basic but this is stunning this is our little set up for dinner tonight Fire. So we're just having dinner over there and having dinner over here. Is so if you can hear that noise, that's a hippopotamus. In the tree behind me, you're just going to have to believe me, there is a leopard. I would take a picture of it, but with impeccable timing, the camera's packed up and we're trying to fix it. Then I came up with the idea of using my pair of binoculars and my phone camera and putting the lens of the phone camera up against the binoculars to feast your eyes on these leopard pictures. And so finally, on this Uganda trip, I can wear my shirt with pride the right way around. Feast your eyes. We've just left Queen Elizabeth National Park heading down the road and from a bridge we've seen this fishing village that is so alive and full of colour. Let's go and have a little look around. So what are we doing today? We are going to Kehihi. 
Right. On our way down to Lake Bunyoni. We're going to drive through uh, Queen Elizabeth National Park. Let's go. Come on. So we're just driving through the Queen Elizabeth National Park. We're taking the back way straight through the park. Travelling to Lake Bagnoni uh, along the back roads, which are a bit bumpy, and the weather's packed up, which is a shame because the scenery here really looks pretty spectacular, though it's a little bit difficult to, to see through the mist and rain. Um, also a shame because I'm actually getting rained on even though I'm inside the car. I'm actually getting wet, but never mind. Uh, we will carry on. Check out that. Look out that window there. Well, you can't see it on the camera. But, uh, it's, it's, it's a beautiful country. Look at that. I'll just pull over and see if I can demonstrate the type of scenery that we're driving through. As I say, it's a shame that it's raining. Um, hopefully it'll clear up soon. The storms here seem to seem to blow over reasonably quickly. Famous last words. Well, the weather's got better and the road's got worse. Um, the road conditions have been like terrible. I've had to put the car in four wheel drive for, I don't know, an hour or so more, I think. Um, we have been stopped by a couple of people by the side of the road um, who said in sign language, because they didn't speak English, don't go on. But we did go on. <laughs> uh, we came to a, a village um, where one person spoke English and he he seemed to think we could make it because we've got a strong car so um, we are pushing on um, very very slowly right panic over I think um, we've got out of that forestry road and the roads turned into something a bit better we've gone into uh, territory that's uh, full of these lovely tea plantations and we've spotted some vehicles coming this way so if they can get through we can get through so I think we're gonna live So having made it by the skin of our teeth to Lake Bagnoni, right here, uh, last night, and we just got here just just before dark really, we're not supposed to drive our van in the dark, which we didn't. And while, while here, one is required to go for a swim, is that right? I feel I should go for a swim, Right, that's the thing. I'm so scared though. <laughs> What's it like for temperature? It's cold. I just don't care about any of that because I'm a bit scared. Come on, dive. Do a backwards dive. Oh. <laughs> I've done it. And I'm still alive. <laughs> so what about the hippos? Well, apparently this is the only lake without hippos or crocodiles. <laughs> but I don't know if I'm buying it. So oh. it's going to be a short swim. Okay. It's nice. 
Is it? Yeah, it's really nice. What, the temperature? Yeah, come on. No. We are two kilometres almost above sea level here. So it's not, it's not warm here anymore. It's, I mean, it's nice, it's a nice climate. But you, you know, it's not, it doesn't feel tropical really. She's hassling me into going in. I'm going to have to do it. She's lying to me about it not being cold. Here I go. Right. I've done my duty. <laughs> Come in. <laughs> May not have been quite as cold as I feared. <laughs> it's, it's very nice, actually. It was lovely. Beautiful here. So having survived our swim, we're now doing what you have to do, which is go on a boat ride around the lake. I reckon you've got to time your visit to this part of the world. Uh, it's the start of March now, which is the start of the rainy season, end of the dry. Um, and we've just got off our little boat and come stop for a drink at this resort. And um, here we are. Nobody else here. It's quite strange, there's a, a, a whole island with a guy waiting to sell cokes. And only us here. The scenery here reminds me of the Alps, the European Alps. Uh, the little houses on the hills, the, the bits of uh, tiny bits of agricultural land, the goats wandering across the road, particularly uh, from, from my childhood when we went to um, what was then Yugoslavia, what, what is now Slovenia and Croatia. Um, it's, yeah, it, it's so picturesque, uh, very quaint actually. We're leaving Uganda today. Um, quick summary of the place. First of all, I'm going to start with the bad. It's not a cheap country. It's not set up for budget travel. I consider myself a budget traveller. And um, really, you go from one tourist enclave to the next, and there's not much in between, really. I mean, I've been travelling with my partner, and she likes a bit of luxury anyway. Uh, but I can honestly say, I've, I've, this is the most expensive sort of trip I've ever had. I, I Well, I don't know about that, but I think it might be. Um, which is odd for such a poor country. Um, which is one of the reasons why uh, we didn't do the gorilla trekking, the gorillas in the mist, we didn't do it, uh, because it, it is prohibitively expensive. Um, we did the chimpanzee one, which was awesome, and I, I just thought, well, let's quit while we're ahead. Um, that's the bad. The other bad is the towns and nothing to speak of really. There's nothing much in the towns. Having got that out of the way, the good. It's a fantastic place. <laughs> the, the scenery, the people are great. I mean, we haven't had one bit of hassle since we got to Uganda over two weeks ago. Um, and been around the country. Um, people have been really friendly. Yeah. Um, the scenery. What can I say? I mean, the camera doesn't do it justice. But the wildlife, amazing, incredible. Like just just the bird life is incredible. I've never seen birds like it. I'm not like a bird fancier or anything, but. I kind of become one, it's like, yeah, uh, and, the, and the, you know, the big animals, you know, the tigers, not tigers, lions, um, yeah, hippos coming up and while you're having dinner, <laughs> you know, amazing, um, yeah, Uganda, this was supposed to be a quick summary. It's a beautiful country. Here's a guy with an umbrella on a motorbike. With his whole family on the back, probably. 
Um, see you in the next one.